Hi everybody, I'm Julia and this is Julia at Home. Today's video is about our favorite family read-alouds so far. So we read a lot of books as a family. Um, we usually read in the evenings. Um, I have my husband read mostly because I'm reading a lot during the day and then also allows me to have my hands free um, currently because I'm nursing a baby but also because I like to do crafts such as knitting or sewing while he's reading. I just find that really calming and it is one of my favorite times of day. I have 10 favorite books plus a bonus at the end so you'll have to stay to find out what that is. My daughter is currently seven, my son is four. So we have read these when my daughter was between the ages of three and seven and my son was like a, a between a baby and four really. Some of them we're actually gonna have to come back to because he doesn't remember them as well. So here are my top 10, or really 11, that we've read so far. The first is Charlotte's Web. It's a classic and it's easy and a joy to read. The writing is just delightful. But really anything by E.B. White, Stuart Little, Trumpet of the Swan, we're gonna come back to those as well. They are fantastic. In case you don't know, it's about um, a girl and a pig and a spider. <laughs> and uh, it's just the, the characters are delightful, the writing's delightful, and if you haven't read it, you should. My number two is The House at Pooh Corner. We also did this this year with Quiver of Arrows, and I had done it when my daughter was really young, I think when she was around three, and my husband and I really enjoyed it, and she didn't get as many of the jokes then, and she got a lot more of them now. Um, but it's entirely appropriate to read to a three-year-old. She still enjoyed it. You know, it's 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 Pooh and Eeyore and Christopher Robin and Piglet and all of the, the cast of characters that you know from the Pooh stories. And um, any of the Pooh books, I recommend this is the one we happened to do because we had the quiver for it. Um, and one of the things I love about it is Pooh writes uh, songs or poems. And so we would recite the poems for fun. <laughs> and they also make great copy work. Number three is The Frog Princess. So this is like, it's a twist on the fairy tale of the princess and the frog. So in the fairy tale, right, she has to kiss the frog and he turns into a prince. Well, this puts a little bit of a spin on it. And you might know already, there was a Disney movie years ago called The Frog Princess, which was loosely based on this novel. Um, it's interesting. I have mixed feelings about it because when Disney made the movie, The Frog Princess is the first black princess. So that's exciting. But they did change. They took the um, structure of the story, I guess, and then changed certain elements. So this really doesn't take place in like Louisiana and they added in um, voodoo and stuff like that. That's not part of this book, which um, like I get why they did that. But on the other hand, I really like the world of this book. And so part of me wishes they hadn't, but it's a fantastic book. There's actually a whole series. We act, we listen to it an audio book, actually, even though I have, I have the real copy as well. Um, and we'll listen to it on audio again because I really, really enjoyed it. And again, my son doesn't really remember it. This is a fantasy genre and we love fantasy. My husband and I both love fantasy books and we've passed that on to our children. And so you will see more, even though there is a mix of genres, we might be a little heavier on the fantasy side than some other families. This next one is not fantasy. This is fantastic. My husband had this from when he was a child. It's called The Wolfling um, by Sterling North. And it's just, it's like a, it's about a boy. And I think it takes place, I want to say in the 1800s. I'm not 100% sure on that. We read this last year. Um, but, and he, he adopts this wolfling. I believe it's half wolf, half dog, but it gets a lot into natural history elements. He has a mentor who was actually a real person who, um, who was a naturalist. So yeah, this was a like kind of surprising. We just pulled it off the shelf because my husband had it, but fantastic read that I would highly recommend. Number five, I actually don't have a physical copy of. We listened to it on audio in one in a long car ride, um, but I almost wish I had a physical copy to show you. And that is Dragon Rider. I will link all of these below. So please check it out if you're interested. Dragon Rider involves a boy and a dragon and a brownie. <laughs> and more dragons and other magical creatures. So obviously it's a fantasy novel for kids. Um, parts of it can be a little scary, but I think overall we all really, really enjoyed it. It was actually a relatively long audiobook and it really held our attention throughout. So Dragon Rider is my number five. For number six, I'm cheating a little bit because I have two here, but it's the Burgess Bird Book and the Burgess Animal Book. Um, if you do Charlotte Mason, these are actually on, I think for 
I don't know if it's for form 1A, B and 1A, um, are on the curriculum lists. But I read the, these, oh gosh, I think my daughter might have been four when we read this one and then like five when we read this one. And we're going to read them again. I think next year we're going to do this as part of school again. These are fantastic. So it's told, um, this one is told from the perspective of Peter Rabbit, who is going around the orchard in the woods and is talking to Jenny Wren and learning about why the different birds do what they do. Um, so each chapter features uh, one or two different kinds of birds, um, mostly songbirds, passerines, but I think it gets into some other ones too. Um, again, it's been, it's been, yeah, it gets into like owls and it gets into some other birds too. So it it's just, it's a wonderful example of a living book. And then similarly, this one is the Burgess Animal Book. So really, I think it gets into mammals mostly. Yeah, I'm fairly confident it's, it's, it's just mammals. And it, um, I think it's actually Mother Earth who's teaching Peter Rabbit. Yeah, Old Mother Nature is teaching Peter Rabbit and his friends about himself and all the other mammals of the forest. So that one's fantastic. There's also the Burgess Seashore book, which I don't have yet, but it's on my list. And then Burgess wrote a bunch of smaller books featured on like a particular animal. So we have this Adventures of Patty the Beaver and there's more like this, like there's Reddy Fox and there's a bunch. Um, there's, you can see it's pretty short. Um, but I would start with either the bird or the animal book. They're longer kind of chapter books. Um, so that works better in the read aloud context. Um, but that's my cheating number six, which is actually multiples. My number seven is kind of surprising. So this is the Calder game by Blue Ballet. I don't know if I'm saying that right or Ballet. Ballet. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but there you go. Um, the Calder game. I got this book to try because we studied Alexander Calder as our artist in the fall. And, um, I, I just found it and I thought it might be a little too advanced for my kids and I didn't know how they were gonna like it. We read this pretty much nonstop for several days until we were done. It's a mystery book, but it's written like, it's so it does have a few scary parts, but it's definitely written at, um, like a young adult, like maybe, maybe aimed at like older elementary kids level. And it was so fun. Again, like we didn't do some other schoolwork because we just wanted to read this straight through. Um, so I recommend it and I'm going to be getting, they have, um, I'm not sure if the author's male or female, but they have um, Chasing Vermeer and The Right Three. And so I will be, I will be getting those as well because I just really, really, we really enjoyed this one. It's kind of a surprise mystery genre um, novel. And since we like these, I've also picked up some more mystery books for us to read that we haven't gotten to yet, but Number eight is one my kids insisted that I add here. So, and this is Tales from the Odyssey, part one. There's part one and part two. There's actually, I think when it originally came out, it was in like five or six books. And so the five and six books are combined. Let's see. Six books. The, the, like each book. So this is part one is actually books one through three. And part two is actually books uh, four through six. Um, but it's the Odyssey told, um, translated for kids by Mary Pope Osborne, who also wrote the Magic Treehouse books. Um, I have to say, I actually thought her writing was better quality in this than I do in the Magic Treehouse books, but I think she was writing them for a slightly higher level. It was really well done. I would recommend it. We did it as our read aloud while we were studying ancient Greece and my kids enjoyed it so much. They insisted that I put it on this list of their top read alouds. Number nine is a series, I'm cheating again, but it's the <laughs> Enchanted Forest Chronicles. Um, I have this set of four. The first one is Dealing with Dragons. And this was one of my favorites. Um, I think it was one of the first series I read to myself when I was a kid. Um, and it's about a princess, Cimmerine, who doesn't want to do normal princess things. And she runs away and lives with dragons. Again, I think my daughter was three or four and my son was a baby when we read them. So we'll have to come back to them again. But ha reading it again as an adult, there were a lot of jokes I actually didn't get when I was a child reading it and my, my daughter still thought it, she got a lot of the jokes and still thought it was really funny, but there is even more that I got, um, that my husband and I both got reading it as adults. And I love those kind of books for this, where there's something for every age and level to enjoy. So this is the Enchanted Forest Chronicles. You can start with dealing with dragons is book one. Book 10 is yet another fantasy. And this is the green ember by SD Smith. It's adventuring warrior rabbits. <laughs> 
That's what I'm going to say. There are some scary parts of this. Um, and we also read the second one. It's up on my shelf. It's up on my shelf, but you can't see it right now. Ember Falls. And I believe there's actually two more now, plus possibly one that was written in the same world, but is not part of the series. But I need to go get the next ones now. And I think we might start from the beginning and reread these again at some point. Um, my children, again, I think my daughter was four. So my son would have been like two when we read them. And they both remembered the fighting rabbits. <laughs> so um, this is one I'd recommend. That's my book number 10. Unfortunately, I don't have anything in my hands for my bonus book, book 11. But if, honestly, if you've gotten this far and you take nothing else out of here, this is my favorite audiobook of all time. Of course, it's also a physical book. The series, The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place. And the, fir the first book is The Mysterious Howling. We actually took these out from the library and then ended up buying the last one on Audible. I want to say, I want to say there's like seven of them total. And I will have them linked below. I highly recommend that you listen to these on audio. The narrator is fantastic. Most of the books have the same narrator and then they switched, I think a little more than halfway through. And it's, the narration is still excellent. It's just, I like, I preferred the first one and I can't remember the name of the actress who does it, but I believe she's on Downton Abbey. It takes place in Britain in, I believe it's Victorian times. And it's about this girl who becomes, she went to, a basically a school that trains governesses and she's the top of her class and she becomes governess to these wild children. I don't want to give too much away, um, but at Ashton Place and it is fantastic. And I think one of the reasons I love it so much too is that in her being governess, she's teaching the children, right? And so I related a lot to her teaching methods and how she was doing it. Um, but also there's just a fantastic mystery that's woven into the series um, as well. So that is my bonus book, number 11, but it's probably my favorite book that I've listened to in the past 10 years. The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place. And again, the first one is The Mysterious Howling. So those are our favorite read alouds so far. We are always reading more. Um, we just started a new one. We started the Wings of Fire series and we're enjoying that so far. Um, so I'll have to update you with a new favorite list in a year or two and see what we're adding to our favorites. If you have favorite relouds that I have or have not mentioned, please comment below and let me know. I'm going to link to Science Mama's video here as well. She's fantastic. She just started a channel and I know she comments on here sometimes and hopefully she's watching, but she recently did a video of read alouds for four and five year olds. And I think there's a little bit of overlap, but not a lot. Um, and she mentioned some of my favorites as well, and she's fantastic. So if you're watching this, go check her out as well. We didn't think to do a collab ahead of time, but I'm going to give her the shout out. I hope you're having a fabulous week and that you get some time to read with your kids. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye.